You've seen how we can use dot cells twice in a single line of code to select a range of cells, but we're not done yet. We want to do something more dynamic and powerful than simply hard coding values into the VBA editor. We'd like to create some interaction between the spreadsheet and the VBA editor. That's going to allow us to create more powerful routines. Let's get into the spreadsheet file for the last time. Moving on to the fourth sheet in the file, which is from cell range. That's the name of the sheet. And here's our setup. We've got row control one, column control one, row control two, column control two. So rather than having these hard coded values that we can see in this line of code, we want to be able to control these values from the spreadsheet that in turn will allow us to control the range of cells selected from the spreadsheet using dot cells. That's super cool. We've been building up to this. This is the culmination of the series. Let's get it done. Okay, so we can do this with a fairly simple process of substitution. So our first value, we don't want the hard-coded value, we want the value from the cell in the spreadsheet. The first cell is cell E8. So I can just say range E8 here. Now I'm going to make sure I close the, that should be okay, let's see what happens. Yep, I'm going to make sure I close the brackets as I go along, otherwise this could get quite confusing. So is this working for us? I can just play the code quickly and I can see something has happened. So there's no errors in the code. It's a good idea, it's a good idea to check step by step, do a little bit, is there an error in the code? That's gonna allow you to isolate the error should there be one. So we've got E8 here, then I'm gonna copy paste this code and the next cell, column control one, we can see is E9. Okay, there we go. Now you can see the line of code is getting longer and longer. That's why we've got to be steady and systematic. I'm going to use an underscore here to move the code onto a new line. Because of the underscore, Excel will understand it as a single line of code. Again, just quickly try running the code, not worried about the selection. I can see there isn't an error there. So our next cell, so row control two, is in E11. So we're at E8, E9, I'm gonna copy paste this code, save on a little bit of typing, substitute for the 11 here. We're now in E11, and then one more copy paste, and now we're in E12. Okay, so just work through that, steady, systematic, manage not to get too confused. Let's see if we can get this working. So again, we've got to think about where is the start point? Where is the end point? Remember, the first dot cells gives us the start point, the top left, the second dot cells gives us the end point, the bottom right, that defines our selection. Uh, so the start point is going to be 14 rows down, two columns across. So let's say 14 here and two. And the end point, well, it's going to be 17 rows down and five columns across because E is the fifth letter in the alphabet. I went back to the VBA editor then. We don't need to go back to the VBA editor because we've got this mechanism working here using the cells. Okay, so back to the routine, hit the F5 key and we can see we've got our uh, range selected there. Why don't we attach this code to a button and then just run it from the button. That's easier than going to the VBA editor. The name of the macro is range select. I've got these buttons pre-prepared for you. Assign macro and range select. So now I can change this selection. So let's just take this row, make it one higher, make it up to 15. And then we can see that this is the selected area. I'm gonna make this 16. What would you expect to happen now? And then we can see this is the selected area. And let's try to reduce the selection. So say we just want two rows and two columns, and then we can see we've got two rows and two columns there. So again, it's important to play, change the values, what happens, change the values, what happens. This is gonna allow you to build your understanding. That takes us to the end of the series, but I really hope it isn't the end of your usage of this super powerful dot cells technique. This is kind of a small series just to get you used to the basic techniques. I mean, this is in itself, isn't super useful, but as I've said several times through the series, rather than having values here inputted, these could be counting formulae. We could have a count A formula that's counting 
how big a selection is, how many rows there are, how many columns there are, uh, counting that dynamically, uh, combining that with dot cells in VBA to create that kind of super powerful dynamic mechanism. Now, what you're seeing on the screen now is an example of where I've used dot cells in a more complex application to get something super powerful done. The link to that video is in the description below. I recommend you go and have a look to see dot cells in action. If you've got the basics, and you've got the basics if you work through this video series, if you've got the basics, you can just understand some of the applications beginning to appreciate the possibilities and the power, then you're in a position to try your own application I wish you the best of luck with it. I'm Chris from Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I've got quite excited during this series. You know, the magic of code never fully goes away. It kind of fades a bit over time, but I still get excited about it. The aim on the channel is to share some of that excitement with you, and I hope you've felt some of the power. You can find your own application application for dot cells. Please leave me a comment below. Let me know how you're getting on. If this series has helped you, give it a thumbs up. That would really help me out. I look forward to seeing you in another video on the channel.